will now uh, we will talk about COVID-19 gastrointestinal and hepatic manifestations and treatment. As we know that uh, the main scare of COVID-19 is always associated with respiratory symptoms. And um, despite this, we have uh, an important issue to address uh, and an important uh, item that is progressing in these days, the gastrointestinal and the hepatic manifestations. Uh, we'll start today and we will talk about uh, this item. Uh, the aim and the sequence of the lecture, we'll discuss a real case scenario for management and we will discuss the gastrointestinal and the hepatological manifestation of COVID-19 and their pathophysiology and how to diagnose, especially if the presentation is only, only concerning the GIT. Um, what uh, could be, uh, be the best management plan for the associated uh, GIT and hepatological manifestations? We will start with a real case scenario. Uh, just a, a case to show uh, our point. Uh, it's published already uh, by uh, Dr. Uh, Song et al. Uh, on uh, 29 January 2020, a 22-year-old uh, man presented uh, with local, uh, to uh, the local fever uh, clinic with four days uh, of uh, diarrhea and low-grade fever the temperature reaching uh, 38.3 uh, Celsius, and the diarrhea was uh, three to four times per day. No other abnormalities were observed. There is, was no uh, chest symptoms at the time of the presentation. He took two kinds of Chinese uh, patent medicines for the, the GIT discomfort for three days. While the symptoms were not significantly improved, regular stool examination and bacterial Uh, and bacterial uh, examination for the stool uh, showed negative uh, bacterial culture and uh, the uh, lung auscultation revealed ronchi and chest uh, radiography performed showing pneumonia in the bilateral uh, lungs and he confessed that he had a history of short stay in Wuhan on 22 January considering his travel history a clinical diagnosis was suspected to be COVID-19. So a CT chest was done showing multiple ground glass opacities uh, bilaterally. And uh, on uh, the 2nd of February, he was confirmed to have SARS-CoV-2 virus uh, by BCR uh, assay, and he was admitted to the hospital. The patient reported persistent diarrhea, no fever, no cough, and uh, no dyspnea and no chest pain. Where vital signs were no within normal ranges, the patient received supportive care and antiviral therapy in the form of lopinivir and ritonivir and uh, aerosol uh, interferon alpha-2 and uh, astalsustain for the expectoration. During hospitalization, the temperature was normal and he had fewer diarrhea. Moreover, there, was no, uh, there were no uh, obvious alterations in the function and coagulation function and the antiviral treatment and the diarrhea of the patient uh, where it was ameliorated and then disappeared completely. And then uh, his uh, PCR turned to be negative and the CT uh, uh, showed uh, negative inflammatory signs. And then he was fully recovered and discharged to home. This was his lab, uh, all uh, are within normal. And uh, this is a mild case of gastrointestinal uh, manifestation associated uh, with the COVID-19. And as we see that his diarrhea preceded his uh, respiratory uh, symptom uh, complaint uh, presentation. So we have early reports from Wuhan, uh, two to 10% uh, of the patients Hello. Uh, two to ten percent of the patients with COVID-19 had uh, gastrointestinal symptoms, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and vomiting. And the abdominal pain was more frequent in the patients who were uh, in the ICU. Uh, with ten percent um, uh, of patients presented with diarrhea and nausea one to two days before the development of the respiratory symptoms. Uh, we can see that some papers uh, uh, claim that uh, the digestive symptoms uh, appear to be uh, an element of worse prognosis. 
then uh, those who don't have the digestive symptoms, but this is not uh, uh, confirmed uh, in all the papers. Some papers say that there is no difference between uh, um, um, the prognosis that, uh, of the patient who have digestive symptoms or not, and some say uh, that uh, they, uh, there is a different prognosis between both. Uh, some patients present with the GIT symptoms only, as we said, and some uh, present with the GIT symptoms uh, uh, present with the respiratory symptoms. So we have, uh, so ha we have to be aware of uh, this presentation. What are the most likely presenting uh, gastrointestinal symptoms? Uh, as we know, it could be nausea, the patient uh, um, uh, losing his appetite and is having tendency to vomit and uh, fever, uh, dizziness, uh, headache, all these are associated with any viral infection, abdominal cramp and abdominal pain, which could be associated with the uh, diarrhea or uh, the bloating or the uh, liver uh, enlargement or uh, element of hepatitis and the diarrhea. We see that there is difference in the uh, presentation um, in some uh, studies between the uh, ICU and the non-ICU, and some studies state that both are equal in case of presentation of diarrhea, but they are mostly in the range of 10% of the cases who are presented for COVID-19. So 10% of the patients uh, could be presented with uh, diarrhea or nausea or vomiting or uh, abdominal pain is a little bit uh, rarer than uh, diarrhea and uh, mood. Uh, this is a collection of study as we see that they are mostly from China because most of the um, study that uh, reported on these uh, till the time being are from China. Uh, we see here that uh, there is um, the four symptoms that we mentioned before, and with variable incidence in each study, ranging from 2% two to 2 in the diarrhea to up to 50% in some cases, and uh, variable uh, studies, most of the studies didn't report on the abdominal pain. So uh, when pulling of the uh, diarrhea cases, as we see here, uh, they found that mostly it, uh, it's about 10% because it was very variable, as we said, from 2 to 50% in some studies. And uh, the pooled uh, analysis uh, showed about uh, 10%. Uh, in another model, uh, this study was done after the first one. They found by a fixed effect model uh, that it is 6.1% and a random effect model 13 to 13.8%. Uh, so it's uh, about 10% as uh, the other one. So the presentation of COVID-19 in about 10% of patients could be uh, diarrhea and uh, could be uh, uh, other uh, GIT symptoms like abdominal pain and vomiting, but it's uh, rare uh, than, uh, or uncommon. Uh, the most common one is the diarrhea. So what is the pathophysiology of the GIT manifestations in general? There are three uh, causes of uh, gastrointestinal damage. First, the direct infection of the gastrointestinal cells by the virus and uh, the gastrointestinal damage caused by the lung function, uh, lung infection. So the lung is affecting the, uh, the gut and the gastrointestinal symptoms caused by the uh, drug side effects. So let's start with the direct infection of the gastrointestinal cells. As we can see, this is the uh, angiotensin receptor, which uh, will, uh, 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 we have angiotensinogen, which will be converted to angiotensin 2. And angiotensin 2 is the uh, one responsible for the activation of the uh, macrophage activating system and the vasoconstriction and the hypertension. And most of the manifestations that we see COVID-19 Activation of angioreceptor is the receptor uh, binding of spike protein responsible uh, negative two and uh, activate. Uh, 
Tensin uh, uh, are inhibiting feedback mechanism to affect and uh, inhibit the angiotensin 2. So uh, when there is uh, is uh, mostly uh, occupied by the spike protein from the virus, there will be down regulation of the ACE2 and uh, there will be more action and more activation of the angiotensin 2 and the macrophage activating system. What is the macrophage activation system syndrome? Uh, it is uh, a syndrome um, of poorly recognized syndrome of Fulman cytokine storm, which we all know, responsible for the COVID-19 manifestations and mortality and the ICU admission, and multiple organ dysfunction and high mortality rate. So it's mainly the, the main responsible element in the problems that are associated with the COVID-19. It can affect uh, most of the organs or all of the organs of the body through uh, activation of angiotensin before causing the system, the lungs and the body uh, dangerous be uh, the respiratory disease responsible of the patients is to uh, has uh, to, uh, to help uh, spike protein ERS it's a responsible uh, protein combination receptor and uh, protein are uh, or enzyme are responsible for the cell entry of the virus so the virus can enter and uh, cause its, uh, its action and uh, be uh, responsible for the down regulation of the ACE2 receptor and later on the activation of the inflammatory response. So the down regulation of the ACE2 due to consumption from uh, uh, overactivation by the virus. So the virus attaches to the uh, to the spike protein. Uh, the virus spike protein attaches to the ACE2 receptor and enters the cells, causing ACE2 down regulation. And this ACE2 down regulation will cause the uh, action of uh, the angiotensin 2 to be increased as the down regulation there, uh, there is no uh, negative feedback on the angiotensin 2 and its harmful effect so it will be increased and it will be uh, uh, causing the uh, macrophage activation syndrome and the inflammatory uh, cytokine storm and the uh, ERDS as we know so uh, actually giving this to molecule uh, 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 ameliorate this. Uh, as we can see uh, in ACE2 defici uh, deficiency also increases in uh, H5N1 induced uh, lung injury in uh, this profile uh, the ACE2 uh, deficiency also increases. So uh, a proposed uh, a treatment, which is not available at the moment, but it's just uh, a theory that if we have the ACE2 molecule or uh, we can block uh, this serine protease TMP RSS uh, molecule uh, enzyme, uh, we can have a treatment for COVID-19. But this is not available at the moment, but just a theory to understand the pathophysiology. How did we know that the S2 is uh, present in the gut and uh, is affected? Uh, there is a single cell atlas of the digestive tract and the lung tissues done that is present present mainly intestine, uh, high it's all possible why this so virus and 
receptors and this area and the collaborations. Uh, another screening of the receptor. Hello, Sara. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, uh, there was a problem in the connection. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where uh, did it happen? Uh, which slide could you help me? Yes. Uh, this one? Or the one before it? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Okay. The second? Yeah, that one. This one. Okay. Yes. Uh, examine these two receptors. Uh, P is unstable. Uh, examine the person's across the intestine. It's most prevalent pool. Uh, the virus in receptors that gene of the virus is and that the receptor is the name and direct and when hello uh, Sara We have lost connection. Yeah, Sara, can you hear me? Un unmute. Yeah, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, I think you uh, the network connection is poor from your side. Like. the screen shared now? Yeah, uh, yes, share your screen. Is it shared now? Yeah, one moment. I feel okay. Time on. Yes. Yeah, from 25th slide. Okay. My voice is. Yes, uh, your voice is not clear. So like uh, the network is not uh, good from your side. Yeah. Is this better? Sorry, we can't hear you. Should I? Hello? Hello? Yes, yes. Is the voice is okay now? It's okay now, but actually, uh, like, once you start your presentation, we can't hear it. Like, your video and audio is getting struck. So, uh, should I re restart the program or? Uh, or, or can I try to proceed? It it, it is better now, but again, okay. uh, if if we face the same issue, like it would be better you check your settings. Uh, we will move to the next one. Now you can continue. It's it's good now. Okay. Uh, 
so uh, we have a, a study that is uh, checking the immunofluorescent presence of the virus and the receptor. They found that the receptor is present in the uh, GIT, but not the esophagus. Also, they found that the virus nucleocaspid protein is present in the same areas that uh, have the receptor, the ACE2 receptor, but not uh, the ones that uh, doesn't have the receptor, which means that the receptors, the receptor, the ACE2 receptor is responsible for the uh, infection by the uh, COVID-19. And the absence of the receptors in uh, uh, some areas or uh, mutation that causes uh, downgrading or absence of this receptor, these patients will not be infected or these areas will not be infected. Okay, uh, another uh, uh, thing that is very important is the persons of uh, the um, tryptophan amino acid entry into the cell. Uh, the ACE2 receptor is responsible for uh, also uh, the tryptophan entry through the cell by the combination with the B081 uh, receptor. So uh, uh, entering the tryptophan will cause activation of the mTOR, uh, 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 mTOR uh, sequence, which will uh, release antimicrobial peptides which means that if the S2 receptor is not present, so the tryptophan will not enter, and this uh, will be the cause of a decrease in the antimicrobial peptides and disturbance of the um, gut microbiota uh, with increasing of the infectious uh, uh, bacteria and uh, the uh, harmful bacteria. So how uh, this uh, S2 receptor will be uh, absent uh, by our regulation that the COVID-19. And thus, uh, able to end intestinal will cause the, the, in the antimicrobial peptides and the disturbance of the gut microbiota. That's why uh, most of the uh, management now uh, encourages the use of the microbiota to correct this problem. The uh, persons of the antimicrobial peptide that is limited by the ACE2 down regulation and uh, causing the colitis and the uh, intestinal uh, infection that happens due to disturbance of the gut microbiota. Uh, on the other hand, so this is the direct infection or the direct affection of the virus on the GIT. But Uh, Sara, about the lung. Hello, Sara. Sara. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, is my voice clear now? Yes. So the cytokine storm that happens uh, will cause Uh, will cause the uh, uh, activation of the uh, gut uh, lung uh, axis and will affect the gut uh, through passing of the cytokines from the lung to the uh, lymphatic and vascular system. So this is, uh, in conclusion, we have gut lung axis and gut liver 
acrocytokines, which will pass uh, to the intestine, will cause activation of uh, the uh, inflammatory intestinal uh, tissue and uh, colitis, and these cytokines will pass to the liver through the portal vein and will cause the hepatitis. On the other hand, the absence of the uh, ACE2 receptor on the intestinal cells will cause accumulation of tryptophan, and uh, thus the mTOR will be inhibited, and this will cause uh, decrease in the antimicrobial uh, uh, molecules that uh, make the gut microbiota balanced and stable. Uh, the last one is the gastrointestinal symptoms caused by the drug side effects. As we know that uh, all the uh, drugs used in COVID-19 have uh, side effects, mainly gastrointestinal. The antibacterial, uh, like Zistromax uh, or uh, uh, other antibacterials, could uh, cause diarrhea. Uh, the antivirals uh, all can cause diarrhea and hepatitis and hepatotoxicity. Uh, antipyretics like Panadol, simple Panadol can cause hepatitis. Glucocorticoids, uh, of course, can cause uh, colitis, can cause hepatitis. Uh, aspirin can cause hepatitis. Chinese patent medicines like uh, Lianhua, Queen uh, Gwen uh, can cause also uh, diarrhea. And uh, the uh, other cause of diarrhea is that the antibacterial itself used uh, in COVID-19 could cause Clostridium difficile infection and uh, pseudomembranous colitis, which is a very serious and uh, highly mortality, uh, high mortality rate uh, infectious disease. Uh, now we will shift to the hepatic manifestations of COVID-19. We know that the, there is a hepatic affection in the form of elevated liver enzymes, elevated bilirubin, elevated uh, uh, alkaline phosphatase. Uh, this could be caused due to the direct infection of the uh, cells by the virus, which will cause direct viral hepatitis or the systemic inflammation that is uh, associated with the cytokine storm and the macrophage activation syndrome that we said before. And from the drug toxicity, the drugs that are used, the antivirals, the antibacterials, the antibiotics, the analgesics, all can cause drug uh, 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 hepatic uh, toxicity and hepatitis. Uh, also, there is an important issue that the ACE2 receptor is present in the hepatocytes and the cholangiocytes. Here are the ACE2 receptor. Here is uh, present in the uh, uh, hepatocytes and the cholangiocytes, which uh, further uh, confirm our point that it could uh, cause a direct infection of the virus to the liver cells. Uh, these are the uh, uh, liver enzymes and the liver functions that we said before, alanine trans, uh, aminotransferase, aspartate aminotransferase, gamma glutamyl uh, transpeptidase, uh, alkaline phosphatase, total bilirubin, direct and indirect amylase and lipase. These are the hepatic functions that we can uh, measure for the patient. Uh, most of the study assessed through the uh, two only AST and ALT, and some used the albumin and the uh, uh, total bilirubin as a, a term of assessment, and they found a mild elevation, uh, mostly two folds in uh, those uh, cases. Uh, the most important issue that we have to address is that uh, liver enzymes is uh, increased uh, in, are increased mainly in the ICU patients, which is very um, logic because uh, these patients are on more medications, they are ventilated, they are susceptible for more infections, so uh, it's most uh, they are most liable for uh, uh, element of hepatitis due to uh, drug toxicity or due to severity of infection of uh, COVID-19 or other bacterial infection associated. Uh, so, uh, in another study, when they assessed, uh, they found that uh, the liver enzymes was uh, heavily uh, increased in the ICU patient than the non-ICU patient. This is the uh, uh, an autopsy done a patient the lymphocytic focal hepatic hepatic necro. Could be in, is no sign 
it's most of uh, the the uh, cytokine storm, hepatic affection. It's what viral shedding? Viral shedding, as we know, uh, we test the BCR from uh, nasopharyngeal patients. Uh, but when they examine the patients, they found that viral particles are present by BCR also. Viral particles are present in the stool of the patient. So this viral shedding, uh, it's found also in the, uh, in the uh, 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 fecal stool, not just the oral swabs or the serum uh, samples that are present. Uh, these are the studies that they did uh, fecal test for uh, SARS-CoV-2. They found uh, also variable results, uh, uh, positive results were from 15 to uh, 54 percent, which is wide range uh, from those patients. We can see something uh, very interesting that uh, when they examine the uh, anal swab and the uh, oral swab, Sometimes they didn't find uh, the oral swab positive, but the anal swab was positive, which means that the patient could be infective while we test him and uh, think that he's negative. Uh, so uh, the uh, oral swab uh, could be positive while the uh, fecal swab uh, is, uh, sorry, uh, oral swab could be negative while the fecal swab could be positive like uh, those two patients here. There is a viral uh, uh, shedding shift. Uh, these data uh, suggest that shift from oral uh, uh, positive uh, early period to uh, more anal positive during the later period. They found that uh, although the nasopharyngeal swab are positive uh, early, uh, the, uh, the fecal swab could last for some time, which means that the patient is still infectious uh, through uh, the feces and through the uh, gut excreta, uh, although he is tested negative by the nasopharyngeal as well. A possible shift from the oral positive during the early infection to anal swab during the late infection can be observed. This observation implies that we cannot discharge a patient purely based on the oral swab. We have to uh, take care that not to uh, uh, discharge a patient with negative oral swab if his fecal, uh, there is an element of colitis or an element of fecal swab uh, positivity. As we see here that uh, on date zero, uh, these uh, uh, anal swab were uh, positive and more swabs were positive at day five. This is another study done. Uh, the red ones are the oral swab and the uh, uh, orange ones are the fetal swab, we see that there is a delay in the uh, viral uh, shedding uh, through the fecal uh, uh, matter uh, than the oral swab. Yeah, uh, which means that the, the fecal matter is still infectious late be, uh, after uh, stopping or negative uh, nasopharyngeal swab. Uh, so what is the implication of this? Uh, the data suggests that the fecal sample positivity for the SARS-CoV-2 normally lags behind the respiratory tract samples. So the patient, when he is not infected anymore by uh, uh, nasopharyngeal swab, not to be discharged yet, we have to re-examine uh, and uh, be sure that he's not infectious to the community or uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, ones around him. Uh, another uh, proposed uh, element is that there is IgM positive rate increase and the IgG positive rate increased uh, from 50 to uh, 81 percent and 81 to uh, 100 percent. So the uh, authors here suggested that we use instead of the nasopharyngeal swab if we don't have uh, 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 fecal swab, uh, we can use uh, also the viral IgM if we are uh, the patient have proven to be uh, rising in the tetra of the IgM or the IgG, then uh, there is uh, an uh, improvement and recovery of the patients and we can discharge the patients and it can be used along with the nasopharyngeal swab instead of using the nasopharyngeal swab uh, by itself. 
uh, what are the preventive measures for the endoscopic procedures uh, to protect uh, the doctors and the nurses and the uh, working uh, uh, healthcare workers in these areas? First, that we don't have to do any um, endoscopy except if emergent uh, and there is urgent uh, indication. We have to categorize the uh, indications. Of course, the emergent are the uh, life-threatening conditions as uh, sending acute cholangitis and uh, foreign body uh, retrieval. Uh, the urgent are the staging mainly of the cancer or the uh, rescreening and the elective uh, could be postponed uh, after the pandemic or after the, uh, uh, the condition is uh, mainly uh, uh, decreased in uh, severity uh, across the country. The recommendations uh, for the healthcare professionals to wear gloves, masks, protection gowns and goggles, and uh, to pay attention for hand hygiene and patients with diarrhea uh, have to be uh, monitored uh, closely and or endoscope should be uh, uh, de-infected uh, properly. So uh, any patient could be infected with COVID-19 and doesn't know. So we, if we did a screen we can, uh, and the screen was negative for this patient, we could use surgical mask and face shield and uh, gloves and uh, uh, single uh, use gown. But if uh, unscreened, we have to say that this patient is mostly uh, infective and uh, we have to suspect this patient uh, infectivity and wear N95 and face shield and uh, other protective measures. What is the management? Currently, there is no specific treatment for COVID-19 and its management is mainly uh, based on supportive care, as we know. And the antivirals used uh, are all uh, still in uh, clinical trials and uh, there are some indications and some uh, uh, things that are showing positivity, but uh, mainly uh, we're still uh, using different regimens. No evidence that the efficacy of the antidiarrheal drugs is available. Uh, antidiarrheal drugs or uh, anti-infective uh, drugs in these cases are not used uh, by itself. We just use the antivirals and they will uh, cause uh, the virus to be cured and uh, with the supportive management of the patient and thus the diarrhea will resolve by itself as the case we saw uh, in the first of the presentation. He didn't take any antidiarrheal drugs, he just uh, took the antivirals and the diarrhea subsided by itself. So there is no specific treatment for the GIT manifestations, either hepatic or gastrointestinal, but just supportive measures. There are some trials uh, we will discuss uh, now. Uh, management of the upper gastrointestinal disorder like nausea and vomiting, we use the common drugs like metoclombromide, dompredone, uh, hydroxytryptamine. Uh, all these can uh, prevent the nausea and vomiting and they are used on demand according to the patient and we, will, we try uh, always to uh, uh, stop uh, when uh, not needed or uh, to uh, decrease the dose uh, if possible to avoid liver injury. And um, also uh, the fever control, uh, we have to take care of the antipyretics used and liver support and psychotherapy. Management of the di diarrhea, as we said, there is no specific treatment for diarrhea, uh, but uh, there is uh, some um, use uh, for uh, th when the diarrhea is more than four, uh, four times per day, we can use a clay or a uh, uh, dioctahedral uh, more uh, this is clay, or probiotics, mostly lactobacillus could be uh, beneficial. Probiotics are the only uh, anti-diarrheal uh, drugs uh, that could be used in COVID-19 and show uh, promise, uh, results, uh, promising results uh, all over. Uh, also, uh, they act on the um, on the mechanism we said before, when the tryptophan can ent can't enter the cell, this will cause the activation uh, uh, of the mTOR to be limited, and then the uh, antibacterial and the uh, antimicrobial antimicrobial will uh, cause uh, uh, will decrease, and this will cause uh, the uh, diarrhea uh, to increase due to colitis and the infection of the cells. 
So here uh, we can uh, improve this gut microbiota by the probiotics and by the use of probiotics mostly used. These are old studies, but the, uh, the author collected it as a, a sign of evidence for use of the probiotics in the viral infections and in various uh, disease to improve uh, the uh, gut microbiota and uh, the uh, balance between the inflammatory and the anti-inflammatory uh, bacteria. Uh, the Lactobacillus caseae, Lactobacillus mainly, is one of the, uh, with all of its species, one of the uh, most used uh, bacteria. By, uh, by uh, Bifidobacterium also used uh, a lot, uh, and other uh, probiotics could be used. So how they work, reduce uh, incidence and duration of the respiratory tract infection, lowering the duration and the severity of the flu-like illness, and uh, improve the gut uh, barrier integrity. All this happened in uh, previous viral uh, management uh, and uh, were in drug trials. Molecular mechanism of action of probiotics through improvement of a type 1 interferon through increased number and activity of antigen presenting cells, natural killer cells and T cells, uh, as well as the level of the systemic and the mucosal uh, specific antibodies uh, in the lungs and the probiotic also modify the balance between pro-inflammatory and uh, immunoregulatory cytokines. But does the anti-diarrheal drugs by itself has any role in COVID-19? Actually, no. Uh, the metronidazole used was not used as an anti-diarrheal drug. It was used as an immunoregulatory drug, and it was tried on this basis as it has uh, effect on interleukin uh, 8 and 6 and 1B and TNF. It decreases the inflammatory marker so, uh, caused by the uh, macrophage activating syndrome and are not used for the diarrhea itself. Either mectin and uh, nitazoxanide uh, are uh, also working through another mechanism through the restoration of the interferon homeostasis. So uh, they are not used on the diarrhea of the COVID-19. They are tried and they are in clinical trials for a new modulation of the COVID-19 cytokine store. And this is very different uh, 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 course of uh, treatment. Management of liver injury, as we know that the liver injury that we said before uh, could be from direct infection, uh, so we have the antivirals to uh, lean on, or the due to uh, drug, uh, uh, drug adverse effects. So we stop those drugs or decrease the doses of those, of those drugs, but mostly there is no, uh, no measure to take other than uh, hepatoprotective agents if we couldn't uh, control the problem uh, by uh, antivirals and stopping of the hepatotoxic drugs. Uh, so this is uh, an algorithm that if we have moderate uh, to severe pay, uh, cases uh, already confirmed, uh, we check their uh, AST and ALT and alkaline phosphatase and uh, uh, gamma GT. If they mildly elevated, there is no specific treatment and regular monitoring. And if they are severely elevated, then we uh, refer, uh, refer to hepatology for the items that we said before, either to stop hepatotoxic drug or consider a hepatoprotective drug or, uh, or use another supportive measures. Uh, but uh, does we do, um, uh, sorry, do we do uh, uh, the liver enzymes and the liver function uh, do we do it uh, on a um, uh, uh, regular basis? No. Uh, we just, uh, uh, either the case is moderate to severe case of COVID-19, so we are afraid of the complication of the disease, or the patient is having a pre-existing liver disease, which actually could be very much worsened by the COVID-19, although the data is not uh, sufficient, but a few uh, case uh, profiles showed uh, this. Outpatient management, uh, it's preferred, uh, of course, uh, for the distancing to use a telephone interview to know what is the case exactly we are dealing with. And then uh, uh, when uh, designing the room uh, of entrance, we have to use uh, entrance and waiting area and consulting room and uh, infectious disease ward uh, as separate as possible for uh, avoiding of contamination. Uh, 
the treatments are the focusing on the uh, healthy gut or uh, uh, prevention or uh, decreasing the symptoms of the COVID-19 are still uh, under trial, mainly microecological preparations like the uh, probiotics and the China National Health Commission and National Administration of Traditional Chinese Medicine recommended probiotics uh, to balance the intestinal microecology and prevent secondary bacterial infection. Is uh, two inhibitors, there is a lot of debate around them, but uh, there are uh, drugs that can cause ACE inhibitors showing uh, some uh, theoretical uh, promise, but uh, there is no solid data about uh, this. Diet and enteral nutrition, uh, uh, if the patient cannot be fed uh, normally, we have to use parenteral nutrition or nasogastric tube or nasogestional tube. Conclusions, COVID-19 is caused by uh, the severe acute respiratory syndrome, uh, SARS-CoV-2, and its receptor is to, uh, was highly expressed in uh, the GI epithelial cells, providing a prerequisite for SARS-CoV-2 infection. Uh, SARS-CoV-2 viral RNA has been found in stool specimen of infected patients, and 20% of patients showed prolonged persons of SARS-CoV-2 RNA in fecal samples. Uh, after uh, the converting to negative in respiratory system, and these findings suggest that SARS-CoV-2 may be able to actively infect and replicate in the GIT. And the current strategy for detection of the viral RNA or oral swab used uh, for diagnosis is not perfect. The virus may be present in anal swabs uh, and uh, uh, in the blood of the patients when oral swab detection is negative and patient infected may harbor the virus in the intestine at the early or the late stage of the disease. As we said before, it could be an early presentation by the diarrhea or the gastrointestinal manifestation or lagging of the um, virus in the uh, fecal matter later on. It's also worth to note none of the patients with viremia blood has positive swabs and these patients would likely be considered as COVID-19 uh, negative uh, through routine surveillance, thus pose a threat to other people. Thank you. Thank you.